Good morning. I'm Janet Johnson with Charter School Capital. We're uh, here at the National Charter School Convention in Austin, Texas, where it's nice and warm. We're here with uh, Taryn Moore from Schoolment and Kurt Nielsen from Charter School Capital talking about enrollment today. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, enrollment, when it comes to schools thinking about that, it can be a little daunting. They have to run their schools and also try and get their word out. So when it comes to things like leads and lotteries, can you think of ways they can manage that kind of information and that kind of process? Sure. So there are so many great tools out there. I think the key is really finding the tool that's right for you. So I would say look to your current challenges. Um, if you have a lottery that families are saying is not transparent, find an automated lottery tool, um, something that really directly addresses that challenge. And, and first and foremost, I would say with whatever tool you choose, find one that's suitable for your families. So if your families don't have home computers necessarily, find a tool that's accessible on mobile. Uh, find a tool that's available in multiple languages. The goal is to make it easier and more accessible for families. So there are tools like that. Oh yeah. In multiple languages. Absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. Love, love hearing that. Yeah. And you talked about uh, some of the tools that are right for the school. Could you actually, when it comes to when in the school's uh, history, does it matter? So if there's a school that is just getting started or the one that's been around for several years and have been renewed, is there a right time for a school to start uh, accessing technology like that? Sure, I would say as early as possible is, is really the best time to start. Um, I think you know when you start early, you can sort of tackle some of those change management hurdles early on oh, yeah. and um, start reaping the benefits sooner. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and you can start out like, wait, start out with an online application and then would it make sense you know, move into lottery or a lead tracking system? Okay. So I can definitely hear some of why a school would want to access technology like that. Are there benefits also to the families and the students from schools that access technology? And if so, what comes to mind? Yeah, of course. So I think for families, um, bringing technology into the mix really makes things more you know, simple, more accessible for them. It can make really confusing policies uh, feel simpler. It can bring a lot of transparency to various processes as well. And, and like I was saying before, if you have you know, a tool that's accessible on mobile, a tool that's available in a language that's comfortable for you, that's going to do wonders for families. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And so broadly, if you're going to take your experience and say, hey, over the last couple of years, things are changing in the enrollment technology space, what kind of things are you seeing and what kind of things should schools be aware of as they think about this? Sure. I think we're seeing a lot of different trends. Uh, one is a move toward a common application. So we're seeing more and more cities kind of unify, bring all of their charter schools or a subset of those schools together onto a common timeline and into a single application. So parents only go to one place to, to put that application in. Um, we're also seeing a lot more sophistication and in interest tracking and events tracking so that schools can uh, you know, manage and track and engage prospective families. And lastly, I would we're seeing a lot more sophistication in the way of data analysis. So schools want to know, you know where their student applicants are coming from. Yep. Um, schools want to see what their acceptance rates are like year over year. And I think um, on the front of data analysis, when you think about something simple like a student address, we're all collecting student address on a paper form. Yes, we are. Which you, know, you can't do much with if it's just on paper, right? But if you have an online tool that um, takes that student address and drops a pin at that student's home location, and then you have this you know, beautiful visualization of a map, you can see there's this cluster of students applying from this area, and there's kind of this bare spot over here and then you can make really data-driven decisions about outreach uh, to help achieve your enrollment goals. That's great. And so when I listen to I'm like wow she's really smart she's got it <laughs> she's really offering great information but if I'm a school and I hear all that I'm like wow that sounds a little daunting why shouldn't I be worried about taking the first step to move in this direction if I'm a school? Sure so I think you know everybody's got to start somewhere and there's definitely some change management involved in moving to technology um, but there are some benefits right off the top and I think particularly Particularly for school staff, if you think about admins um, who are today spending lots of time entering data from paper systems, um, the move to online makes them you know, really have a simpler day-to-day -day experience in the office if they're not entering that, that data from paper systems, if they're not spending time manually tracking and managing a wait list, for example, they have more time to spend directly with families, which is really a better use of their time anyway. And of course, they have so much more you know, powerful data to deal with as well. And so as we listen to you and start to get comfortable with the idea of using that technology, 
to really uh, move forward enrollment in schools. What kind of things do you see that come from it? So what's the success story that comes from using this kind of technology? Sure, I think some of the points that we've hit on already. So um, you know, an easier, more transparent experience for families, for sure. Uh, more powerful access to data for schools so that they can really make data-driven decisions. Um, and you know, really a move into the 21st century. Parents are already using so many online tools as it is to check students' grades, to get e-newsletters from schools, so to bring more and more of those processes online. Um, it's, I think, a lot less daunting today than it was even just five years ago. And, and do you, as you mentioned, the different systems and how schools are coming up to speed, do enrollment technology systems integrate with other systems of the school, or do they even need to? Yeah, absolutely. We, we see it both ways. We see um, a lot of schools where they have a bunch of kind of ad hoc systems that are working independently, and they're navigating through those, and we do those every day on our phones. You know, if you open up your phone, you've got a whole slew of different apps that don't have anything to do with each other. <laughs> sure. But we somehow find a use for all of them and a way to navigate through them. And then there are also systems that um, are really end-to-end, -end, so there's not a need to integrate with other systems because they really cover a whole you know range of processes and then of course there are systems that have great partnerships um, or maybe there's kind of a platform of systems that really integrate seamlessly mm -hmm. sounds like a lot of choices out there if, yeah. I, if I'm a school and I'm thinking through the choices how do I take the first step? Like, what's the first thing that I should do? Yeah, well, I mean, we like choice, right? Yes. <laughs> so I think um, in terms of making the choice, you know, as a simple Google search, of course, will render a lot of great results. But I think also just talking to school admins and school leaders in your area can be a really helpful starting point. So many tools exist, and many of them are already in use by schools today. So finding out what other folks' experiences have been like, um, I think can be really helpful. And even, you know, thinking beyond just the horizons of your immediate geographic area and reaching out to school leaders in other areas of the country that maybe have similar challenges as you or similar demographics can be really, really helpful and kind of finding out what it's like to work with a particular technology provider or a particular system. And so now is the time of year where the schools have finished and they're all giddy that the school year is over. <laughs> sure. But the fall's not that far away. Yeah. And so are they too late to start uh, thinking about these technologies using? Are they too late or not? Really, they could get started for yeah, a while. Yeah, I think it depends on, on the system that you're looking for, um, the issue that you're kind of looking to address. I think if you're looking to um, an online application system, for example, a lot of those systems can get you up and running in a matter of a couple of weeks or maybe, you know, a month. Yeah. So I think it's definitely not too late, and it's certainly never too late to at least begin exploring what your options are. So it sounds like that's the message. It's not too late. There are a lot of benefits to schools, mm -hmm. a lot of benefits to parents. Yep. So get going. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And school mail, the school mail will be here mm -hmm. during the during the conference. Yes. And uh, you're going to be here. Mm -hmm. And um, you're around and online in case anybody wants to reach out. That's right. Yes. All right. Thank you, Taryn, so yeah, much. Thank you so much. So much for yeah, doing yeah. this. It's my great really yeah. yeah. Thanks.